Hi everyone, our goal today is to learn about how we as chemists represent molecules. Often we draw them on a two-dimensional sheet of paper and in fact the molecules are often in three dimensions, right? So how do we uh, convey that information three-dimensionally on a two-dimensional surface? Uh, I want to scroll down to this picture here and many of you are probably not familiar with this wedge uh, dash notation. Um, when you take a five carbon chain, and so remember, every time a line meets, there's a carbon. So here there are one, two, three, four, five carbons in this molecule. And then there are as many hydrogens needed to allow the carbon to fulfill an octet, since there are no charges here. So if I build this molecule, notice the molecule has energy. It's going to be rotating around and things like that. What I want to do is show the lowest energy structure, and that's where carbon is the least repulsion when it's rotating around. So to get the structure on the screen right now, I'm going to draw the, see the carbons are connected by these solid lines. So the, just the regular solid lines mean that those are within the same plane. So I'm going to take these uh, carbon atoms, which are black, I'm going to make them stay in the same plane and I want them to zigzag, you know, so up and down, up and down. And I want them to be flat with each other in the same plane, okay? So if I do that, notice there's my zigzag, okay? So up, down, up, down, up. Now the reason why they zigzag is because carbon is tetrahedral. So that's a lot of where the zigzag comes from. When they zigzag and the carbons are in this plane here, up and down, this hydrogen sticking down is in the same plane as the carbons, and this hydrogen sticking up is in the same plane as my carbons. Now the things that are not in that plane are some of the hydrogens are sticking out toward you, and that's what these are, the wedges. And then, some, and then those are paired with a hydrogen uh, that is pointed back, so these hydrogens right there. And same thing down here, these are pointed at you, and then they're paired with these hydrogens pointed back the opposite way. So that's what the wedges are, are the ones pointed at you, the dashes are the ones pointed behind, and the solid lines are considered in the same plane. Uh, let's move up here and look at the different ways we represent that. This is called a condensed structural formula. Expanded would be where we draw every single carbon-hydrogen bond as well. And then this is our line bond notation. And this is what I want you to practice with because this is probably not as familiar to you, but it's something that we're going to use a lot because it saves a lot of time to just sketch out a molecule with just its carbon backbone and not drawing all the hydrogens all the time. So uh, this is n-pentane, which means normal chain, straight chain, pentane, which is an alkane with five carbons. What we're asked to do here is draw three isomers of these. Now let me show you about isomers. If I take this pentane zigzag and I just rotate it a little bit, okay, I might get it to look different, like maybe it'll look like this. All right, so this actually is the same as this. I've just done a little rotation. Uh, the reason why I know it's the same molecule is if I, if I number these, it turns out that one is still connected to 2, which is connected to 3, which is connected to 4, connected to 5. So these are actually considered the same. The isomer, then, is going to be something with a different structure, meaning a different molecule. Same chemical formula, though. This is C5H12. Now, let me mention how I know how many hydrogens there are without counting them all. It turns out that um, there's a relationship here for alkanes, which is a general formula, CnH2n plus 2. So if I know that there's 5 carbons, that's n equals 5, then 2 times 5, which is 10, plus 2, is how many hydrogens there will have to be to make sure that's an alkane. All right? So that's a really good um, shortcut. All right, so now to get an isomer, I have to break some bonds and rearrange this structure. So I'm going to break off a bond, and I'm going to put it somewhere else. So if I put it on the other end, that's going to be the, still a straight chain, so it's going to give me the same thing. I want to put it somewhere different, so I'm going to move it to the second carbon in. 
And now you'll see something that's branched. See this little Y shape here? So that, that's a branch. So I know this is definitely different from straight chain. So to draw this structure, I want you to practice with your line bond. So picture that you are removing this carbon here, carbon number five, and you're going to reattach it to carbon number two, let's say. Okay, so what do you get if you do that? So what I'll get is one, two, three, four, so a length of four, and then I remove carbon five and stuck it on carbon two. So that now gives me a molecule that looks like this, and clearly that's different from what I had before. So if this is one isomer, this is another. Now I'm going to challenge you to pause the video and see if you can find one more isomer. So many people think of this, and this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, and the branch is off carbon 3. However, did you guys notice that's actually the same as what we just drew? Because you can number it this way, and it actually turns out to be the same pattern, where the branch carbon 5 is attached to carbon 2. So as long as you can still see how it might look the same if you just rotate it, then it oftentimes is the same molecule. The difference is there are these things in nature called stereoisomers, so it's possible these two could be different stereoisomers, but we'll learn about that later. For now, just do the numbering system, and if you can rotate it and it superimposes, then it's the same thing. So uh, the answer is that you have a possibility of one, two, three, four, five. So perhaps you have a chain of three, and then you have four and five coming off of carbon two. So that, that's a different kind of structure, clearly, from what we had before. So it turns out that n-pentane has two other isomers for a total of three possible isomers for C5H12. Now a good uh, way of approaching this is to start with the longest chain you can get for that chemical formula. So if it's C5, go with the straight chain of 5, and then take one off and do chains of 4 with 5 coming off of each carbon, and see if they're the same. In our case, it, these two were the same if you move that branch around, right? If I put it on this carbon first, then put on the next one, turns out there's symmetry, and that's why they're actually the same. Um, and then do a carbon chain of 3 and put branches on till you use up 5 carbons total. So just go from 5 to 4 to 3 and, and come up with all the possibilities and then evaluate and make sure you're not repeating them. So as a uh, practice problem, I would like you to uh, consider C6H what? Okay, <laughs> so 2n plus 2, right? So 2 times 6 is 12 plus 2 is 14. So I want you to do the same thing. And just to give you a hint, the first thing you should do is just draw the six carbon long chain version, N hexane. One, two, three, four, five, six. So starting with this, how many isomers can you get? And let's come back and check our answers. All right, the first thing I would do is go down to a five chain and then uh, add a sixth one as a branch. So I've added a five chain here with one at the second position, one at the third position, and one at the fourth position. And then you should see that actually one of these is a repeat. This is a repeat of that. So they only count as one isomer. So this, I will say no, we've already duplicated that. So now I'd go down to a four chain. One, two, three, four. And then I need two to come off to make six carbons. So uh, then I would do that at this carbon as well. And are these two the same or different? Hopefully you can see that they're the same, so this one doesn't count. And then the other way to do two branches is to do them on separate carbons. So just make sure you have six, one, two, three, four, five, six, all right? And that this is different from that, which it is. All right, so the next step is, let's see if there's any three chain ones. One, two, three. Now, if we go four, five, six, what's wrong with this structure? This is what we call a Texas carbon. <laughs> and that's because 
you know, in Texas, everything's bigger. So they would say, oh, we want five carbons because four just ain't enough. Well, no, sorry, <laughs> five is too many. Uh, and that's because of the octet rule. Sorry, that's a really bad accent, but I tried. <laughs> okay, so five is just too many. So we don't want a Texas carbon. Uh, that's an oh, that's an extended octet, but carbon doesn't have extended octet as far as we know. If you discover one, you get a Nobel Prize probably, but it just doesn't have the shell large enough to accommodate more than eight valence electrons. Um, elements that do, however, are phosphorus, sulfur, um, and the period three and below, they have access to the D orbitals, so, but carbon does not. So. We're going to say that there isn't any more room to put a sixth carbon. So when you do this, though, you'll notice that it's just going to repeat. So let's go back and evaluate how many uh, unique isomers we have. So we have the one we started with, the six chain, the five chain, we have two of those, and a four chain, we have two of those. Now something that uh, some students do uh, at, when they're starting out is they'll say, well, how come I can't wrap it together and do a cyclic C6? Well, let's find out what's the chemical formula for this. C6H, so you'll have uh, two, carbon, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens on each of these carbons, so that means you're going to have 12. So this does not fit the C6H14 chemical formula. In fact, you will notice that rings and also double bonds, one, two, three, four, five, six, you'll notice that they both have the same chemical formula. So rings and pi bonds, when you introduce those, you are removing hydrogens. You're removing two hydrogens for every ring and two hydrogens for every double bond. So that's something we call unsaturation. And when you're unsaturated, that means you're not going to fit the formula I gave you earlier, which is the C, um, N, H, 2n plus 2. Instead, you're going to fit CnH2n, okay? Or you can remove two more hydrogens, C6H10, that means you have two double bonds or two rings or one of each, all right? So that's called a degree of unsaturation. We'll go over that in more detail in next week, but for now, just know that if you have a ring, that means you're going to have less hydrogens, or if you have a double bond, you have less hydrogens, or triple bond, you have even less hydrogens. So Make sure that when you start with a structure like C6H12, if they're asking you to draw an isomer, make sure that those isomers contain a degree of unsaturation. So make sure they're either cyclic or that they have a pi bond. For example, let's do an isomer C6H12. I'm not going to draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 because that does not have a degree of unsaturation. We just did C. 6H14, they're not isomers, right? So don't, don't mix up your ring structures and your, you know, straight chain alkanes. Instead, look for other ring structures. So one, two, three, four, five. So a ring of five with a carbon, okay? Or a ring of four with a branch of two, all right? And then within this, see if there's any variations. Now with this, uh, doesn't matter where you put that, right? They're all considered the same. So uh, this is one legitimate one. Uh, with this one, again, if you put this, they're going to all be the same, right? So not those, but um, maybe you could have this with a chain of two. And so those two are different. So these, these would work. And then try your um, chain of three or ring of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, okay? Or any combination that's different from that. All right, so these are all unique. Or even one, two, three, one, two, three, right? So look for all the different possibilities there. And then remember what I said up here, it could also be a, a pi bond, not just a ring, that also has the same chemical formula. So in addition to all these ring structures, including that one, you could also have one, two, three, four, five, six, a double bond there, and all the isomers of that kind of structure. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, a double bond there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, a double bond here. Okay, and just make sure you don't repeat, because if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, and do one here, 
then this is the same as that, right? So they only count as one. In addition to placing the double bond in all different positions, you also have all those one, two, three, four, five chain with a branch and all the different places that the double bond can go there. Now do you notice some of these are going to be equivalent to each other just by symmetry? So let's uh, find those. These two are actually going to be the same because I could flip the groups. So I'm going to say these are the same, but these are all different from each other. Okay, and I would continue going with branching them and varying the placement of the double bond. And you'll get a lot of different isomers. All right, so practice um, try uh, carbon with try carbon chain with seven carbons and see if you can find different isomers there. Or try different functional groups. So let's try one, two, three, four with an OH. What are the different isomers you might get there? Or one, two, three, four uh, with a carbonyl. What are different isomers you can get there? So have fun with it and you know post on the discussion board if you um, want me to check your answers.